There are some people out there who don't believe in supernatural experiences. They don't believe in some people out there that don't believe in God giving you supernatural experiences, visions of heaven, hell. Some people don't believe in having a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Like, they don't really believe in supernatural things. So, let me say this. So, actually, let's go to James 4 and 8. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So what does this mean? Stay away from sin and draw closer to God. What does it mean to draw closer to God? Read your Bible more. Stay away from sin. Go, go on a fast where you are not eating or drinking anything. Pray more. This is how you draw closer to God. Do kind deeds for people. So as I was saying earlier, there are some people who don't believe in supernatural experiences, who don't believe in receiving supernatural dreams. Some people don't believe in God healing people or doing miracles and stuff like that, or working through people to do miracles and stuff. Now, How can you say that something is impossible when you don't have a close relationship with God? How would you know when you don't spend time with God? As in reading your Bible, praying, staying obedient to God, not consistently sinning. So praying, reading, reading your Bible, fasting and doing kind deeds for people. If you are not seeking God, how do you know what is possible and what is impossible? Let's say this. Let's say that there is this guy that I speak to all the time and you know, I call this guy or you know, we just hang out and stuff like that. And I come to you and tell you things about this guy. Then you tell me what I am saying is not true. But you don't spend time with that guy. You don't really talk to that guy. But you are still trying to tell me what is true and what is not true. Does that make any sense? How can you tell me anything or how can you tell me what I am saying is not true when you are not spending time with that guy? Okay, same thing with Jesus Christ. You are trying to tell me that my supernatural experiences or other people other people's experiences is not true or God healing people is not for real and stuff like that but you don't really have a close relationship with God how do you know what is possible when you are not spending time with God well Kevin you know I never heard of a person really being healed well you are having trouble with the basic things of God you are Chances are, you are consistently in sin. Your faith is very weak. So, if you can't do the basics of God, how can you sit there and point your finger and say, you know, God is not healing anyone or God is not healing through people or like the working of miracles and stuff like that is all over with. How can you say that? 
when you don't have a relationship with God? How can you say that what this person is saying is not true when you don't really know God? Because you don't serve him. Think about that. Why doubt something that you don't know anything about? For instance, let's say that you never seen an airplane and a person came to you and said, hey, there is something that can fly in the air where you can go in there and you don't have to drive or walk. If you was not, if you did not see an airplane ever, would you believe that? No. Do you know how an airplane works? Like the technical details and stuff like that. Of course not. But because you are able to see it, you believe in it. So could that mean that God is doing things through people that you never have seen? Yes. So just because you have not seen it does not mean that what that person or people are saying and doing is not true. I really hope that makes sense. There is technology that is out now that not many people know about. So if a person comes to you and say, hey, I have some technology that can do this and that, would you say, hey, what you are saying is not true? There are many things that we all don't know. Just because it is out of your boundaries, just because it is out of your boundaries in your mind does not mean that it is not true. Because there are many things that we all don't know. Yes, there are people that lie. Excuse me, give me a second, please. Yes, there are people that lie out there, of course, and you have to be careful of that. But if something seems far out, and like I said before, you can't even do the basics of living for God how can you speak on anything? Think about that. And let me say this too. Like many people say, may say about other teachers and preachers and stuff like that, that, hey, this person over here is a false teacher or a false prophet and stuff like that. Many of the people that are saying this are in sin. So how can you say who is a false teacher or a false prophet when you are not even serving God? You are having a difficult time serving God, but you are the one that is criticizing people that are out there teaching and stuff like that. Makes no sense and you are calling up names and saying this person right here is wrong and that person over there is wrong but you are still in sin like you are consistently sinning but you are trying to critique people when you are still in sin does that make any sense? You are critiquing other people, but you have all this sin, and not past sin, but you are constantly sinning. But you are trying to inform other people who to listen to and who not to listen to. Makes no sense. How about you get out of sin, then, if anything, Teach people the right things other than just putting people down. I pray.
pray that makes sense there. So, just because you never experienced it, or your mom and dad never went through it before, or, you know, I've been in church for 20 years and I never had any supernatural experiences. Well, maybe because you are not serving God in the right way. Maybe you are not praying enough or praying, praying in the right way. Perhaps you are still lukewarm. Yes, there are people that go to church so much and they are still lukewarm. Your relationship with God is not dependent only on how many times you go to church because sinners go to church. But your relationship with God is dependent upon how much you pray, how much you fast, how much you read the Bible, so on and so on not just on how much you go to church because many people go to church but how many people at church are really serving God not that many because once church is over you need to be at the house researching more about God not just saying well you know I went to church on Sunday and that's it my researching or my listening or my participation with God is over for this week because I went to church. So next Sunday, that is the time when I am going to read and pray. That is why you are a weak Christian or a lukewarm Christian because you can't just serve God on one day. I am all over the place. So... <laughs> My Lord. So, what this is saying, the closer you get to God, the closer He is going to get with you. So, if I get close to you, what is going to happen? You are going to learn more of me. You are going to see things that ordinary or other people don't see in me. Well, if you get closer to God, the same thing is going to occur. You are going to see things, you are going to experience things that most people don't see. Why? Because they, they refuse to get close to God. Makes sense, right? Because think about in your own personal life. How many people are really trying to learn how you really are, that really care about how you really are? Not too many. So the people who really do care, they learn more of you, right? They experience more of you, right? How about the other people? They won't learn much, right? Same thing with God. If you take the time to seek out God, and I told you how maybe twice already, you are going to learn more things than a person who is not trying to seek God. So your relationship with God is dependent on how much you seek Him. So if I am not praying like you. Let's say that there is a person that pray <laughs> six hours a day and read the Bible six hours a day. And there is this other person that prays <laughs> like five seconds, five, five to, to ten seconds each day, if that. And they may be read the Bible once a week, maybe for five minutes. Okay. So this one person is reading the Bible and praying for six hours a day. So six hours praying, six hours of reading the Bible as well. The other person is 
maybe praying five seconds, five to ten seconds a day, and reading the Bible <laughs> only at church, pretty much. Okay. So the one that is seeking God much is telling this other one what he he is going through and telling him about the supernatural experiences and dreams and stuff like that. And this person here is saying, what you are saying is not true because God does not work in that way. How would you know <laughs> when you are only praying for five seconds a day and not really reading the Bible? How would you know you have no relationship with God? But you are trying to tell someone what God does and what he don't do. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I pray that makes sense. I tried to really break this thing down to really get you to understand this. So if anything, if you want to know if a person is telling the truth, how about you seek God yourself? Other than uh, what, what you are saying is not true, what you are saying is not true, come on now, God bless.